There exists a constant battle for survival. Welcome, my friends, to Atomics on a Friday, a fascinating journey into the realm of cybersecurity, data, and atomic testing. Today, we shall embark on an adventure with two seasoned experts who have roamed the cyber wilderness for years, honing their skills and strategies. Paul Michaud, a master of cyber shenanigans, has an uncanny ability to unravel the most perplexing digital mysteries. Alongside him is Michael Haag, a cyber threat connoisseur who has devoted his life to understanding and mitigating the ever-present dangers lurking in the shadows of cyberspace. Together, they shall guide us through the complex tapestry of this digital ecosystem, revealing hidden treasures and secrets that will undoubtedly leave us with a newfound respect for the world of cybersecurity. So, dear viewers, let us dive deep into the heart of this wondrous realm where the forces of good and evil collide in an eternal struggle, and let us explore what it truly means to protect our delicate digital existence. Join us on Atomics on a Friday. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Happy... There exists happy, a constant battle. <laughs> happy Atomics on a Friday. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, the, intern, the intern is coming around, so we'll... We'll eventually figure out how to do this. Yes, eventually. But today is not that day. It's too much. But we'll get there. Otherwise, happy Friday. Survive another week. Yes. Sorry, trying to get my... Just want the work. Can't get it to work. All right. We're here. We made it. Welcome all listeners and viewers be sure to like and subscribe toss that in now because i'm gonna forget <laughs> so today we are digging into account discovery and we have a lot to discuss which is exciting i just I I more to discuss on the what are you hunting than we have plenty of account discovery things but yeah. A lot of activity in the past two weeks on the, the hunting side. Yeah, big time. Um, Spoiler know, alert, kinda... APT's ahead. <laughs> yes, is that our banner? We got we have a banner. <laughs> I saw this one. I thought that was good. Flaxseed, APT Flaxseed. bakers. <laughs> I think we created that one from Flaxseed uh, last yeah. time. Flax Typhoon, is that what it was? Yes. Yeah, all right. Cool. Well, introduce ourselves. My name is Michael Haig. Uh, you can follow me on what was once Twitter, now known as X. No. And it's, it's Twitter. It's always Twitter. <laughs> yes. If you search Twitter, um, everything still shows up. It's still the bluebird. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, excited to be here. If you're new here, welcome to the crowd. We have Tons and tons of people pouring in right now, which is great. So, yeah. All 8,000 of them. Uh, oh, I should probably introduce myself. I am Paul Michaud. I am a senior threat hunter. You can find me on Twitter, where I mostly just do nothing except lurk in the shadows <laughs> and occasionally throw out spicy takes. Not as spicy as others, but I try sometimes. We'll get there one day. The spice is alive. Pumpkin spice is back. <laughs> Flax spice. That's your new name. 
Um, we also have a new Twitter account. It's Atomics on a Fry. They wouldn't let me add day, so we got fry. <laughs> yeah, we have so many fries. Yep. Can we shorten it to just the four letters? AOAF? Oh, no. We probably could have did AOAF. That's I don't fine. see why not. I like fries. It's fine. Yeah. Atomic on a Fry. Um, and then also, if you're interested in being on the show, hit us up. Uh, I think the DMs are open. If not, just tweet at it and someone will respond. Yeah, somebody will yell. Yeah. The intern will be all over it, so you're good. Yeah, and just don't worry about like production quality. If you'd watch the show, you know we have very high standards. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, ultimately today we actually have slides put together, which is cool. Um, I think for the second time ever <laughs> since doing this, I think we started a year ago, actually, pretty close to it. Uh, yeah, actually, probably should look when we first started our first show, but yeah, there's mitigations. <laughs> yeah, you're really proud. I of that. didn't make them. I just copied the links of people who had already done the work. So <laughs> we're just going to present that information to you all because it's important, and it's a highly underutilized repository. So it'll be good. So. Our first episode was nine months ago. We're almost there. Oh, we're almost there? Oh, wait, yeah. our first episode was in December? Uh, yep, apparently. According to nine months ago. Wild. All right, and let's go. And my hair, my hair was short. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Well, wait, are you going yeah. off Drive or are you going off YouTube? YouTube. Okay. I'm saying, because I don't think we had I Drive for a minute. Uh, yep. Yeah, not until we got a little bit bigger. I should probably look for... at Twitch because I think we didn't stream to YouTube just yet. I think we were doing Twitch only. Oh, really? I remember that. Yeah, it took a minute to get YouTube going. Got it. We only have 24 followers on Twitch, even though I think it's the more looked at one. It's I don't the know. Lighter I think YouTube. One. Yeah, LinkedIn gets pretty hot. So thank you for watching on LinkedIn if you're on LinkedIn today. Yes. Big facts. Thank you. <laughs> it is lit. Yes. I had nothing to do with it, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. I saw the I saw the DM threads. <laughs> I mean, I was there. Yeah, you were around <laughs> in spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty cool old project. Um, if you haven't seen Sig Sig Converter .io, that is our Sigma rule converter. Community maintained. Um, it's really cool. Like it's free. You could run it in a Docker instance. I think it's like. I mean, outside of Docker, it's only seventy-two lines of code. Um, pretty cool. So, I mean, here you drop the link into the channels. There you go. But yes, thank you for watching on Twitch. All right, ready? We ready? We ready to go? Let's go. Okay. So what are you hunting this week? Clearly my crash dumps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a, a massive stormy crash dump occurring uh, this past week. <laughs> Yesterday, it was, I think, released, that blog. Um, let's see. Let me find our... I have the link. Nope. All right, MSRC yesterday. Here we go. So, if you've been following the saga of the Storm 0558, this is the group who stole the keys, MSAs, uh, for Microsoft, persisted in the environment <clears throat> for an amount of time. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a cool one. They basically took the keys from a crash dump on a box sitting, I think, in a dev environment. Is that right? Did you read that? Did you read it? <laughs> yeah, I read it. Okay. Uh, I, I basically, every time I finished a sentence, had about four questions in my head <laughs> yeah. through the entire read. It's like a three-minute read. It's very easy to, yeah. to read. But yeah, uh, so the crash dump occurred in a highly controlled environment that doesn't That's have internet word. access. 
the dump yeah. was then moved from that environment into the traditional, like non, you know, a standard corporate environment, standard crash dump, you know, moving policy. During that, sounds like there's a workflow that looks for things like passwords, tokens, keys, etc. However, some logic in they had like a race condition that prevented uh, the detection of those keys going out into the separate environment. And then where that crash dump ended up, that user or dev engineer had their uh, account compromised. Adversary had it. They were able to then take that crash dump, extract the keys, and that's how they leveraged them. Now, Wiz came out with an article yesterday, which at the bottom of it had some very good points and questions, which kind of alluded to it. And whatever your perspective is, right? Like, in some cases, do I blame Microsoft? Sure. In some cases, do I blame them? No. Like, it's the reality of this, of the cyber world we live in. Like, you can't protect everything. And sure, can we say Microsoft should be able to do these things? Like, should they? Sure. Can they? Yeah. But have they fixed it? Yeah. But this whole thing. The, the big thing is, though, what's the time frame, right? Anywhere from April 2021 to, like, now, you know, June of this year, it's a large window. Most orgs don't have logs that go back that far. And specifically thinking that, you know, focused on, like, the, the Azure exchange side of things. Yep. Do we have, Will we ever know the time frame or when specifically? Probably not. It's at this point, from what I understand reading it, is it's the best working theory. And that is what it is. Like, can't do anything about it. So, yeah. But yeah, great, great little uh, image here of what occurred. If you like uh, infographics, which I do, I love pictures. Yeah, that definitely helps clarify. But yeah, it does appear a lot of it happened after. I mean, it's definitely been a few years. And I think that's what their blog highlights too. It was some amount of time ago that this and, occurred. You know, the, the point being though, is like the key point, what was the time frame of compromise of that user's account to the, the, the detection of it from not Microsoft, but a government entity, right? Uh, yeah. What's that window, right? If we can identify that window, that gives you a better scope than just saying, well, the dump from April to June, mm -hmm. July, whatever month is, right? Like, but yep. time just and just solution go. Just throw your computers out <laughs> yes the best computer is one that doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> great advice thanks paul <laughs> <laughs> rotate signing every 30 days yeah. Yeah. yeah 30 days why not every 15 look actually randomize those just write a script that just anywhere from a one day to a 30 day window, never know. If you don't know, the attacker can't know. <laughs> yes. Security through obscurity. Yeah. I yeah. I think this is definitely the hot one, right? Being it's kind of a big deal. Wait, Lazarus is back? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Ever gone. Sorry. I wasn't so, targeted in this, so I yeah, you're not over it. Yeah. It's okay. I wasn't we, good enough. We weren't good enough on this one. So, uh, yeah. Like according to Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the North Korean group has been scouring Twitters, uh, targeting researchers. I didn't read much about this other than just people talking about how they were not targeted. And so, and there was, like, apparently, like, classifications of folks who, like, you know, who are being spammed versus those being targeted by, by actual adversaries um, and those who don't get anything. So there's like three camps here, but pretty much I'm in none of these camps. Um, but yeah, there was like a, a Twitter circle that the person had created and showed that who they were. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> the fact that they had the Twitter, Twitter circle was top tier. <laughs> And then somebody opened up the GitHub issue with the link to the Google tag report. Yes. Yeah. Phenomenal yeah. on that repo. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the internet is a wonderful place. Yeah. But they did something similar, what was it, a year or two ago? They did, again, the same thing. They were, like, talking to researchers and then shipping code that they were, like, hey, can't get it to compile. And then they yep. compile it. And that's what injected the 
like remote access on a box or whatever um yeah a lot familiar. of lab environments slash yeah. running on the yeah researchers wasn't that the mandian wasn't that like mandian people or something i don't recall or, i can't remember i remember it was like they were going after pretty big orgs i thought or something but yeah i do remember this now i wasn't targeted so it couldn't be that good yep <laughs> not us <laughs> look i'll run your payload i'll run it right on prod too Yes. Just kidding. Sounds like I would a never challenge. run it directly on prod. <laughs> I mean, the best way to test your IR and security products is to do it on prod. I mean, yeah, red teams, not, do they test your dev environment? Prod. No, they go to prod. Yeah. It's always prod. Anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. Mocky, Speaking of. skipped over that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, the, yeah, so interesting thing cracked out this week was the uh what do you call this ukraine cert um thwarting a apt 28 attack against critical energy infrastructure um this was saved by the end user who received the email uh and also having windows script host disabled if i remember correctly did disabled you read that and default yep. file extensions yep so thwarted Changing those you're wrong yeah. <laughs> and so, but the attack was really interesting. Um, I tweeted a little bit about it because it's Just really cool. Just a little, there, was, there, was a, there was a thread or two. Um, lots of trolling. A lot of, a lot of posts. <laughs> yes. Um, had some help from Jose and Naz Radin as well, who's here with us in spirit, I see in chat. Um, but uh, yeah, this one was really cool. They're using this service called mockbin.org to host the uh, a redirect. So you click the link per the Ukraine cert. Uh, well, I have the tab. I guess I can share the screen. Um, well, hang on. Stand by. Share, share. Here we go. All right. So here we go. Go there. And let that load. Okay, scroll down. Um, there's all this stuff. Pictures are where we're going to be focused here for 2.8 seconds. Pictures. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, you can see the red arrows. But basically, it was an email with the link. Click here. Led to this mock bin page. Um, bin and then this GUID or this ID. Bin ID. Bin ID was basically a uh, script, as you can kind of see here. Um, the script itself would profile your browser it uses like a little check like check function browser version if you were chrome firefox and you know on the, a certain you push oh. in more on that no it's really hard to zoom on this I was zoomed all the way in yeah it's kind of just a screenshot let me see if i can oh, that's better. let me save it yeah it works. save it no it's good bye is that better i know it's kind of yeah, let me here i'll I'll also put photos. it in Slack so people are on Slack. Okay. You can follow okay. Along, but yeah, that's Maybe my mouse pointer. Uh, yeah, so you get, so once you make it to the, the mock bin page, if you're good, it'll forward you to the mocky.io page, which then downloads the zip file. And then if you follow this red arrow up to the top, this is what would happen next, is it then spawns these images, opens up a browser, kind of just like a way to like blind you. Um, and then <clears throat> it goes and like runs a bunch of things, including headless Microsoft Edge, which might be worth looking into. Um, it downloads another VBS and bat file, creates a scheduled task and all that kind of stuff uh, to persist. Kind of funny on the uh, the code page, um, the sixty five thousand one code well, page. CHCP. On there was a couple of sandbox analysis and they, uh, it was like failing to actually set, which I thought that was awesome. It's like, cannot change. Uh, and then the rest down here, um, this is the scheduled task XML, which is also the Tor relay version. If you haven't followed the, this, but yeah, there's like a whole Tor component in here. Um, but on the right, this is a Zscaler published a similar blog um, complementing the cert one here. This is a Nisheng utility called, oh, what's it called? It's Nisheng. Like something. 
start capture server PowerShell script. And that is a NTLM relay slash capture. So it'll capture NTLM creds and then pass it out. There was a couple variations of the script. Uh, this is one version. It's completely bespoke. Like they just, they went to the Nishink site, ripped out pieces that they wanted, and then they like shipped it off based on that. There's a couple variations um, and whatnot, but yeah, this is actually a really cool thing. <laughs> cool attack, I don't know. Um, but there's some awesome stuff on uh, that we'll be sharing more of, but yeah. So, um, fun yeah. fact, I don't know if you came across it. I don't know if I've ever shared it with you, but uh, so the Maki bins, this is not the first time that APT28 was using that service. So the CERT, uh, the U uh, Ukrainian CERT back in April pushed a similar uh, report out but instead of using it for evasion, so you would get an email with a link to the Maki bin, if you pass the checks, it would then redirect you to the Maki.org, which would then download your zip file, and then you open it, click, kick off the whole stuff. Back then, what they were using it for was payload. Uh, so it would run something, and then PowerShell commands would actually reach out and download the payloads that way. So same idea, except now they're just kind of switching it around. So they would have some different delivery mechanism, get execution, reach out and do it, whereas this is kind of the initial try and evade the sandboxing yeah. analysis side of things, meet certain criteria to before you could actually get redirected. But you did some interesting analysis, which actually can show that it tracks who clicks it and where, and then can show you like the redirect link if you meet the uh, criteria. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. I guess we should just go ahead and share that i don't is mind that not it's, it? it's it's public uh it is on the cert blog um so i was testing mockbin or mock yeah mockbin.org um what the heck is going on here yeah prompts happening and uh here let me let me share my screen again um this is actually pretty cool if you've never used mockbin before more or less uh, whatever you create on the site is just public. There's no account required or anything like that. Um, but once you create your first mock bin, you get an ID, as you see here. Um, the ID is like yours for the moment. And you can view the script. You can also view the access logs uh, for your ID. And so when I first created it, uh, if you were following me on Twitter, I was like, hey, no, I was like, click this click this mock bin link and um so it turned IPv6 out six like, down in the middle yeah yeah he had like an ipv6 <laughs> and i'm like well bro like that's awesome it's hardcore <laughs> um but yeah so i was like wow i didn't know you could like track and then i started thinking i was like well wait a minute what if i just switch the bin id in the url and i can see the apt 28 mock bins um so we're gonna release a blog on this. I don't know if I told you that. We're writing a blog for it. But basically, uh, if you go look at all the mockbin.orgs, all the requests on virus total, you can take the, the bin IDs, paste them in there. You can go in and like view the actual history. And this is the access logs. And then you could also view the actual script. So correlate this with what you see in the cert blog, matches exactly. And I can probably zoom in more. Enhance, but yeah, pretty nifty. You can see the Maki IO. All the Maki IOs are down. Um, Maki IO is basically the same thing as Mockbin. It's just a different, different way to host something. Another piece of script and whatnot. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I also found another one this morning where um, you don't even have to host code. Um, you don't have to host like what you're seeing right here, like a piece of code that profiles and forwards you off a redirect. Uh, you can actually post stuff to the bin ID. So if you could post to it, uh, and then what I found was <laughs> the, whomever, whatever it is, is just basically posting process and system info uh, back. And so if you go back here to the to this, you can actually see, you get all the request details, like this one's ahead, but the one below it's a get. Uh, and you can get all the posts as well. You get user agents, but on the right, for the one that was posting, it showed like the full process list and everything like that as well. So the service is really neat um, from the perspective of an adversary. 
wanting to have a a public way of tracking check-ins or tracking, you know, whatever it may be, or like what APT 28 is doing is redirecting. Um, so yeah, this is really neat stuff. I'm, ex I'm excited to share more um, on our little blog. Yeah. It's exciting. It's good stuff. Yeah. But let's go back for a second. <laughs> if you go back and look at that cert, uh, article, nothing in there. If you didn't say that was APT 28, nobody would ever say that was an APT. Yeah. The basics work. The stupid, simple works every single time. And I think we harp on this all the time of like the basics and the fundamentals, but like, look at that, that delivery mechanism. How many detections do you have? How many preventions? Like it's not rocket science. Like that's not like O days. That's basic right straightforward yep. simple but it works like it doesn't have to be some super complex evasive thing like you get execution there it is like the, the hard part is getting that execution on the box then from yeah. there it's when you can start to see some interesting things well, yeah. yeah and right right to that point right is like this is <laughs> this is uh this is the zscaler blog highlighting um variations that they were seeing APT28 do. And in this case, it was running cert util, um, you know, deleting files or whatever it may be. But the cert util piece kind of stands out. We, you know, obviously we have atomic tests for this. Hopefully everyone's looking for the URL cache stuff, encoding hex and things like that. Like all of this stands out like a clown at a funeral. <laughs> Someone had a better one the other day. I was trying to remember, but totally failed at it. So, but yeah. All the, everything we have, right? You know, everything we've seen and done before and monitor, you know, it's all all just kind of standard. And- I bet if we looked at that entire like cert thing, I bet you there's probably, off the top of my head, at least 10 atomics right off the bat. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Who, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, who am I and system info and net user. All your typical stuff. Which is a good tie into our account discovery later. A little nut. Yes. I know. I'm glad you said later because we still have more to go over. <laughs> the adversary didn't follow our rules. Yeah, that we made up. Look. This is win if you can, by the way. lose if you must, but always cheat. <laughs> yes. Facts. Yeah. Also, if you are not following on Twitter. I shipped a tweet on Wednesday related to a free atomic test that I believe nobody has shipped the PR in yet. Double checking. Nope. I don't know. I don't know what's going on out there. Yo, copy paste, get a free shirt. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Doesn't look like anyone's done this yet. All right. Free shirt, going some stickers. <laughs> yes, everyone's after Edge. Oh, they get stickers too? Yeah, you get a sticker with your shirt. <laughs> I don't even think I got my shirt. Did you get your sticker? <laughs> Probably not. I didn't get a shirt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few shirts. I'll throw yeah, stickers that I don't think I've actually made it public. Yeah, so Nas, if you haven't submitted a PR before to Atomic create, or if you have create a new account on Git, first time contributors, shirt, sticker, you get one. And yeah, so get it done. It's on Twitter. It's all there. There's a Git. There's a gist. I will, you know what? Those listening right now get top priority. Are you ready? Here we go. Here you go. Boom. And while we're at it, let's just dig into it real quick. Oh, yeah, what is this? I don't remember what this one is. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, I know. I don't remember either, honestly. It's the Internet Zone one. Um, you just change it to allow everything to open, basically, from the Internet. I don't even recall this one. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So, first time you <laughs> it's, it's, it's already there. You just, <laughs> we truly just have to copy and paste from the PR. <laughs> yep, copy, paste, get a free PR. It's top tier. 
All right. So yeah. TV and there's two. So technically, you and your buddy could exactly have, like, each take one. Yep. That's two and shirts. Make sure, you, make sure you tag Brian and tell him you want the new shirts. Wait, is there new Atomic shirts? No, I've only been asking for new ones for like three years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, tell him you want Ride the Lightning Bird. So yes. if you are, yeah, hang on. We need to open up that image real quick. It's Do we know important. any graphic designers? Because we should get a Ride the Lightning El Camino. We can get designers. I mean, Fiverr's pretty awesome. Hang on. Here we go. This is what you need to ask for. This right here. Yep. That's the one. Okay. Oh, boy. There's so many of these little chat things. Okay. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See right here? You get a t-shirt and a sticker. If you contrib. So like I said, create a new account. Ask for Ride the Lightning. Hey, can you ask that uh, get it. that bot what OPSEC is? I can't chat with it. It's sending me a privacy policy. Oh. Let me refresh. About their OPSEC? <laughs> yeah. Yes, hang on. Hang on. We got a minute before we have to do demos. Let's do this. Here we go. Uh, yes. Show me details. Come on, Birdie. Oh, you can't chat with it. They take it down after you kept asking about it. You go for it. That's right. Yeah. Come on. There's a... Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Connect with an expert. Great. Oh. Bob. At Bob.com. Sorry to all the SDRs who will be receiving random stuff today. Just put in Keith's email. <laughs> Colorado. Oh. Oh, you're gonna. Oh, yeah. We should probably. Do you know if this is live? Does this? Happen? I have no idea. I don't remember. I don't work. You there. don't remember? No. Hang on. I wasn't. I wasn't in charge of the website. Like this. I was in charge may of or may not. This may go sideways. Oh. Okay. I better drop. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Marcus. Sorry, Marcus. Then they were actually going to hire the real person. Too. Good to know. Right. You will I'll leave him alone. The live person. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty uh, funny. Okay. That's good. Oh yeah, EDR. Oh, there's spots. more. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. I'm telling you, we had like a solid thirty this minutes is, of hunting. So there wasn't a blog. It was at. That's why we couldn't find it. Yeah. Well, there is a blog. Somebody blogged there blog recently. Is, of an, and of an adversary accessing EDR to use live response. I swear it was CrowdStrike. I can't find it, but it's out there. If you know of the blog, please share it back. It's out there. But Adam Chester publicly is like, EDRs are amazing. Check out those live response consoles. And then if you read the threads, every, all these red teamers are like, yes, EDR live response is amazing. Compromise 100,000 endpoints in a second. I was like, yeah. Why wouldn't you want to use live response as an adversary aptx you know like okay. live response is lit let's take it back nope. edr was originally built by red teamers right yep so of course it's used by it like the idea of edr is truly just malware that's authorized to run if you fundamentally think about what edr does it is almost like any c2 out there yeah. just it is a c2 authorized. Yep. And the fact is, you go look at docs online, they're publicly available, and they'll tell you the API, they'll tell you whatever you need to go to go script this out. So you don't even need console access. Oh, you yeah. don't have creds? Who cares? Just go con script it out. Tokens? Yep. You can get those. They're running around like hotcakes. And you just blast out whatever you want. And hot tip. <laughs> hot tip, I should say. It runs hot the system. Tip. Boom. Look at this. I don't mean to hijack. Where no, did go? Just go it. Wait. Did he open an issue? Where'd you put it, Nas? Did Nas open an issue? I think you opened that. <laughs> I think you opened your issue on your uh, on your on your fork. You, you need to submit the PR. 
<laughs> yeah. You got to push it. You got to go from you your gotta, branch into, into, into Maine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to open the PR on the Atomic Red Team one. When you do that, I'll share it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go back to what you were going to share. <laughs> Don't do that. But, well, we, we already did, so it's, it's a little late. I, I was going to share his PR, but he, he shipped it to Oh, yeah. He the tagged me on his fork. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna fix it. But yeah, hundred percent. Live response is amazing. You got APIs. You can run a system. All this stuff. We cannot, as defenders, you cannot be naive that your enterprise C two slash EDR is not going to get compromised. If red teams are publicly talking about it, which they are multiple times, adversaries are absolutely doing the same thing. I am hot. your keys. It. <laughs> now EC2. So you think, oh, Amazon EC2? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Enterprise C2 is the new name yep. for it because it's exactly what it is. Yep. <laughs> so true. Defenders, yep. pay attention to those login logs to your EDR. Pay attention to those live response logs. They're a gold mine. Yep. It's if you have, yep. And if you're not the one using it and you have a third party leveraging it, are they monitoring it? Are they looking at those login logs? Either way, somebody needs to be looking at those logs continuously. Yep. They're they're using them. Yep. And I and I think for the most part, most EDRs will log the commands being ran. So you'll, you'll see it in your at, EDR. You'll yeah, see like, the at, child processes of the, yeah. the, the process. Yeah, right? the child prox, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, they should yeah. There oh, we go. Awesome. Your uh it's, shirt utils being your PowerShell's being called from that uh and that telemetry collection process? That's kind of weird. Oh, it's making this weird IP connection to an IP address and not a domain? Who would have thought? Look at that. First time okay, contributor. Merging. <laughs> yes, I'm moving live. Yeah, why not? All oh, right. There's a link that we can just uh, DM Nas now. Really? Um, doing yeah, you should have the access. Oh. It's in the channel. Oh. It's pinned in the channel thing. You just go into the Slack. Oh, and the okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep. Don't worry, Nas. We'll hook it up. <laughs> yeah, we got you. Somebody will. All right. Cool. Dunzo. All right. Check your EDR. All right. Let's get to the show. <laughs> I forgot what we were even doing now. Like the actual like, yeah. core of our show here. But Domain account discovery. I feel like our show needs to pivot a little bit. <laughs> Go back to seven. more of the beginning stuff, the hot takes and the hunting. But. I know. Yes. <laughs> I think one of the great things about Atomics is that it's so versatile in that whether you're testing de telemetry collection, detections, analytics, but it's also great for generating tests. As a hunter, if you're trying to build a query or analytic that says, I'm going to go look for X doing Y with ABC values, and you can't prove and validate that test works, what are you doing? If you didn't test it, it doesn't work, right? Like, it's a fact. Yep. So it's a great way, like whether it's detection, telemetry validation, or hunting, running tests is a great way to make sure that you have the data so you can effectively apply whatever you're trying to do. But account discovery is one of those techniques that is so easily detectable but difficult to scale sometimes because of the way things are. You have, like for example, VPN clients that will run Who Am I? as part of its permission check. And so now all of a sudden you have a hundred of these endpoints with VPN installed that continuously just run who am I as a child process, right? Like, so there's different things that occur and not who am I as part of this, but it's just an example. But one of the big ones that we see continuously and literally if we go to the next slide, uh, I think it's on the next slide. Oh. Yeah, uh, nope, uh, that's procedural examples. But oh. as we can see different, yeah, no. That's... No, go more control. Forward. Hit, hit your arrows. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. No. Okay. So procedural examples of the technique. So in the case we have things like bloodhound, we have, which actually should be sharphound, <laughs> net, net user, net group, etc. And then there's different ways. You have both implementations that can actually do what net is going to do, but in different ways. So in case you load it up instead of creating child processes that would then just, if you have detections that say anytime net use runs, fire an alert. Well, you want to avoid that, so it's a red team you need to implement in some sort of buffer. 
which I forgot to actually pull up and put in the slides, which was potential buff implementations. I think Trusted Suck has some situational awareness buffs that would do I some things. I think we used those on the, one of the last episodes yeah. to sit to sit rep. Yep. Yeah. And so now you're thinking, hey, Paul, where have I seen that before? Go to the D4 report and just type in search net.exe. There's literally three pages of reports that show different implementations of different account discovery commands. Or you could also search on the MITRE technique. Literally, again, I was like, oh, it's basic. Why should I do it? Why? Because the detection is going to work because you look at any of these reports, regardless if it's eight. APT or not, it works. You can get those detections. So go read upon them. Almost, if you, I think I went through three of them and the commands were all grouped exactly the same. Like every single report had like the exact same. Here are the same commands every single time, yada, yada, yada. But the great news is you're like, cool, I built some detections. How do I test them? Great news atomic tests. There are currently 23 tests. These are some high level ones where you can see the net user, the net group targeting the domain. You can also have query user, which is another way to do it. And of course you have PowerShell implementations. And of course you can see there are some overlaps of duplications between atomic one, test number one and two, and they have PowerShell implementations. So again, if we're only focusing on process telemetry side of things, probably gonna see these. But if we focus on the activity or the behavioral aspect of things like network traffic, event log, et cetera, we're going to see some variations in what potentially is logged. I didn't add that. Did you add that? Uh, hang on. Where are you at? I was trying to install invoke. Oh, I'm on the slide. It says don't forget. Oh, yeah. I added that. <laughs> to the domain. I was, uh, I, was, I was trying to test these earlier, and I was like, got to be on the domain. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where that came from. But yes. If you're trying to run domain-based atomics to query information about a domain, you should have <laughs> some form of domain access or the ability to authenticate to the domain to go yeah. query that information. Yeah. Uh, 17 minutes. Let's do some, uh, some demos. Do you want yeah. to kick it off with Sysmon or do you want to kick it off with some lawyer shark? Well, first, I should uh, say. Yeah, I if you want to go first, I'm trying to get this thing rolling here. Actually, Stand by. Invoke atomic. Yeah, if you have it, go for it. I'm just trying to get this thing going. I don't know why. I'm failing. Oh, I know why. I didn't install the the repo, the folder. Okay, go ahead. Load up. Uh, I'm gonna maximize because why is it driving nuts? Fire shark updates. Just <laughs> lame. Ain't nobody got time for that. Who needs updates when you need <laughs> when you want to keep your RCE? <laughs> Big tree. You guys kill that. All so, right, what do we got? Uh, I don't know if I have atomic install on this, so we're just gonna do something slightly different. Do it manually. So let us query the users in a domain. And now, this is what happens, right? Because we're going to ask, in our case, the domain controller, Abiyato DC01, for this information. And what happens is RPC calls are made in order to go query different pieces of information. And now there are different procedural things that occur. In this case, we're using RPC, but as well as SAMR to actually ask for the information. So each one of these, so we domain, domain, enumerate domains, lookup domain, open domain, and then enumerate domain users are different procedures within the SAMR protocol. So each one is going to have a different function with a different uh, structure to that request, right? If we were going to script this or write this programmatically in an API, if we were to go look up in this, it would look a little bit different for each one of these. But what we get is, so each one will get multiple. So in this case of 
open enum domain users, we get opnum 13. Now, didn't have this ready, but if we were to use something like Zeek, we would have very similar structure because Zeek does collect the RPC collection. So we'll have similar structure. And the metadata is slightly different than if we collect it on the endpoint versus over the wire, but the idea is still the same. So this each one of these is going to have a different structure. And because it requires different uh, steps in order to complete that request, each one looks different. Now, if we did something and restart this, continue without saving. We did something like domain groups. We can see similar kind of structure. We're going to connect to the domain controller. We're going to bind to it. We're going to connect, we're going to enumerate the domains. We're going to look up the domain, then going to query information out of it. And then we're going to see, and then slightly different. So it has similar structure to it of the flow of what's going to happen first, and then ultimately what actually we're looking for, which is give me the groups in the domain. And then of course you run different tests. Each one of these is going to generate something different. Uh, I forgot what the other one was. Uh, we could do like a PowerShell implementation. Let's get 80 users. I think I need a PowerShell module. Yeah, I think I need to install uh, that one. What happens when you don't have your atomic uh, invoke framework installed? <laughs> but so again, thinking about different data sources of how we can detect this activity, if we have something like a Z collection or things that can collect that and kind of do some nice machine learning of what's normal or what's not. Now, if we just said, hey, we're gonna focus clearly and just collect everything SAMR and LSR or L LSAT related, LSAT, excuse me, uh, that's a lot. There's actually, you know, in a simple three machine environment, there's not a ton of activity going on, right? If we connected up Zeek, not a ton going on. We now even multiply this by 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 endpoints, a lot of this stuff occurs organically in the environment, so it's very difficult to do it, but can be a great point when you're saying, hey, is this activity coming from a device that either my EDR is now dead because they disabled it, or that endpoint is rogue, or it just doesn't have a sensor installed? Like, where is the source coming from? And we can start to correlate that information if we're not seeing it, right? Because if I'm only saying, hey, just detect process execution of net, I potentially miss it if I fall into one of those categories. So now if we add in a different data source and then things like what happens on the domain controller from the processing of those requests makes a little bit different. Uh, or the other test. There's another one, right? Domain user, domain groups. I don't have the thing down with the slides. Uh, I think there was like one, two, three. Oh, there was query. Uh, uh, yeah, it's the query user server computer name. Yep. Yep. All right, I'll shift back to your screen. Gonna work. Oh, it did. Cool. All right. Let me uh, restart. Savings. Bam. Oh. So again, we get similar information, right? Focused on who is this particular user, but the function calls that occur are different. You can see. This looks completely different than what we saw when we enumerated the groups versus what we enumerated as the users coming out of the domain controller. So again, variance, again, but still relevant for testing in collection, in telemetry collection. But now, what does that look like from a process standpoint? Something like a sysmod that has similar data telemetry collection than to like your enterprise EDRs, CVs, DFEs, Cortexes, S1s, et cetera. And this is not a big one. Yeah, CrowdStrike, excuse me. Don't want to forget the. <laughs> yeah, another instance of using different data sources to potentially try it, again, depending on what you have available, but also thinking fundamentally of if telemetry is down in one source, how do I detect it with a different source? Or if attack comes from an unmonitored asset or a device, how can I potentially use data sources to look for a similar activity? That's right, RPC in your EDR. Let's go. <laughs> Look for that John Mon. Stop sharing that. Okay. John Mon, yes. Coming soon. That's all we can say. Yes. We were smart to see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Window. Here we go. All right. So on the flipper, um, going to just show the atomic side a little bit more. 
Um, all right, so if you have not used Invoke Atomic, uh, we talk about this probably every epi. Oh, I thought um, you ran all of them. <laughs> I did earlier. <laughs> did you? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can hit the T number, 002, and then do show details brief. This will give you all the names and the ones that will work on your OS. And in this particular case, there's all kinds of tests in here. Um, yeah, this one gets big. Similar to the T1112 that uh, we had somebody so kindly contribute to today. Um, so in this case, I want to just look at maybe one test number, test number one. Um, and so we see here, it will spawn through command prompt, net user, net group, slash domain. And then um, as Paul did, he kicked off, I think all three of those, you did one, two, and three. We could run them one by one, or you could comma delimit them and just run them kind of like that. And so my domain happens to have a lot of- Did you run uh, bad blood in your domain by chance? Sure did. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Let's go. I should have said this was production. <laughs> 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 it's, a, it's production somewhere. <laughs> I can't tell you where. It's somebody's production. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, right, wearing so that... a corporate shirt. I know, right? Yeah, so here's uh, test number two using PowerShell to enumerate all accounts. Um, and again, this is a production, non-production environment. Um, it's gonna take a second because there's quite a bit of stuff with bad blood. Is that, it's well, like, that's gonna be it's almost option. like watching paint dry. Yeah, you may have to kill it, but it worked a minute ago. Uh, and then, oh, there it goes. PowerShell version, noisy. And so, yeah, if you wanted to see what the innards are for that, show details. I wanted to show something else here as well. So I don't know why. Net oh, yeah, this is just Dewey. Uh, no, it's not all PowerShell. I guess it's running the command through PowerShell. And then it also uses get local group. <laughs> That's funny. So if you <laughs> I mean, I That's guess if you're trying to. Why is it? Why is that under domain? Yes, yeah, there's, there's some confusion on this particular test. Uh, I mean, it's using, that's so I, local, well, right? So that's all, that's domain. <laughs> okay, cancel, cancel. It'll Slow technically down still make those RPC requests. They're just going to be local. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But not account discovery. I, I guess technically that works if you're looking for domain accounts yeah. that are local administrators or part of local I, I don't know like what the logic was I didn't write this test but yeah. the yep uh, and then test three kind of natively does a little bit different than Paul's more it's just showing the local machine um, if you wanted to test another machine you could do tack prompt and I'm trying to think if I remember the other computer's name. Hello. I doubt it. I don't think that's right. It's been a hot minute. Oh, oh yeah. RPC okay. server is unavailable. Denied. Okay. So yeah. Um. Oh, Splunk. All right. So as far as data, you get a ton of data. Let's oh, see. What's up, Zach? Welcome. Oh, there was something else I wanted to show. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Yeah, I see Zach in there now. Okay, go back here, here. Um, we've talked about this before uh, re regarding net. Hang on. Let's go back. I mean, net itself is extremely powerful. You can create users, delete users, modify users. It, it's not yes. just for querying. Like, net? go look up net, whatever it is. This is only like, what? A, holy cow. So there is shorthand when it comes to a lot Oh, yeah, slash do. Yeah, and you're starting to see this more and more. If you dig through the DFIR reports, you'll see them now. They're starting to do do and dumb and things like that. It will run the same Don't thing. Worry. And it's, <laughs> it's meant to... The, to the detection section of our slides. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, well... But, oh, it's right. in there. It's in we're, there. Hitting, we're hitting time. Let me at if least not, show. 
one thing in Maybe Splunk. just one time in Splunk. One Splunky. Here we go. Boom. All right. So high level, command line by process, parent, child. Just to kind of give a quick gist. Let me refresh here for the last 15 because we just ran a bunch of things. Um, so just looking for nets, all net execution. And, and then what's event ID one? Sad. Event ID one's process create. Um, which will have your process command line, parent, child. Apparently things are a little slow today. Come on. Well, you got an angry red uh, exclamation point. <laughs> yes. Your IO is probably hosed. Yep. Yeah. No, so oh, it's just delayed. 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 Usually my IO is, uh, is angry. <laughs> it's all the wild cards I have. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I only you're not wild card and cards. you're not trying. <laughs> yes. If you're not wild carding, you're not doing it right. All right, so that was that, very high level. Go back to our slides. Because for the first time since I think the first episode. Detections. 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 So. Ooh, Nas. I know. I need a PR to, to add in slash Dom. There you go, this is. This is like there you go. There's your t-shirt contribution. Yeah, t-shirt number two. Well, that's I don't know if Sig was doing t-shirts like Art Dance, but uh, you can go ask Nas for a t-shirt. Because yeah, he's looking for. Is this the right yep. one? So yeah, so there's a. So if you go, so this is oh, one. It's right there. Particular do. Yeah, but so does it have slash Dom? Joe, but there's not slash Dom. Maybe there's they like wild. I wonder if they wild card it when you convert it. Oh. I know a way we could test the conversion. Do a sigma, sigma convert. Sig converter .io. <laughs> Let go. go ahead. Well, if you go search for, talking. yeah, any of those uh, bullet points that you, you see there, there are plenty of rules for this type of activity. And again, you're like, oh, it's bypassable. Sure, anything's bypassable, you give enough time, enough resources. The idea is that catch those low hanging fruit. Why wouldn't you? Don't, don't listen to people on Twitter of, oh, I can bypass. Yeah, 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 big deal. I don't care. Like, <laughs> go look at any of those deeper reports. Do you think the adversary cared? No, they went straight zero to 100 and think got ransom. Any. <laughs> Enjoy those quick wins. Take the wins. Go on with life. Map mitigations. This is interesting. I would highly recommend Johnny Johnson's MSRPC to attack repo for A, hunting, but B, the mitigations, especially on SAMR, and the LSAT LSAT, which will help with things like the sharp hound enumerations, the net use, et cetera. So there's some really good information on there. Now, is it a quick, oh, I'm just gonna go blast this PowerShell script across and I, I win? No, you're gonna have to do some homework. But if you wanna make it hard for attackers, you wanna impose some cost. Man, you're dropping it all. Some of this stuff. And there's some, <laughs> yeah, I'm just throwing it all out there. I'm to make it like <laughs> some really cost. interesting ideas of how to to do some of this, um, whether it's prevention or mitigation or even slow it down. Again, getting those wins, making it more difficult is better. I actually watched, uh, they tried to write a, a payload into C Windows tasks, fail, couldn't get that to execute. So then they wrote it to C public, tried to execute to get that way to fail. So again, things that we can do to slow things down, right? Just trial and error. Adversaries are human. They're going to make mistakes. Let's figure it out. Mitigations. Uh, Wait, hang on. One yeah, more share. One thing. But that was the yeah, two yeah. top things. But now you got shares. Yeah. Boom. Let's go. There you go. I hope this is the right one. Oh, it's probably not the right one. I yeah, think I got the wrong one. one. But it's close enough. Okay. Well, it still converts. So I converted convert to Cortex. To? I did Cortex. I'll right? tell you if it's nope. correct or not. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it live. I don't know what that is. All right, hang on, default. There, boom. Yeah. Thoughts? It'll, it'll, uh, it'll work. It'll work. <laughs> it may it'll not work. be perfect, but it'll work. Let's Look. do... Hold Spunk. on, scroll up. What's that, what's that picture in the top corner? <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't you remember from the tweet? <laughs> yes, I do. I'm just happy that it made it in. I am the converter now. I am the now. converter now. 
top tier. <laughs> yeah. All if right. you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Yeah, you're there not you trying. <laughs> Phenomenal. So, yeah. Mitigations, detections, signal rules, atomic cuffs. Look at that. There. All things. Not at all. He's gave you it on a silver platter. Now you kind of go do your work. work. Go find, find those all the APTs. That's your job. And then, uh, once you find them, or if you don't find them, it's time to impose some cost on them. Put yes. in some mitigations. Use WDAC, is what I hear. Yes. No, hang on. The new one is uh, look for all your dumps. That's right. So, yeah. If you're not sifting your crash dumps, are you even trying? Yeah. If, if you haven't seen your dumps in a while, you're probably not doing things. Cool. That was awesome. That was a lot of content in like 15 minutes for Atomic <laughs> and like 30 minutes of, of all the cool awesome. evil things going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to you have to pivot. Here's your test. Go test them. Here's relevant tests based on our our thoughts. We'll keep it going. Yeah, that was cool. fun. Get fun. Good stuff. A lot of stuff. We'll catch you in two weeks. Again, if you want to be on the show, slide us a DM. We're very high uh, quality production value. Yeah, right here. Atomics on a fry. We like yep. fries. It's not <laughs> X. If you reference it as X, I'm going to ignore you. Um, so you can find me on Twitter. Yes. If you used to call it. It's <laughs> the only X that exists in my books is DMX, RIP. <laughs> Money. All right. Well, everybody, have Happy a great Friday. weekend. Have a great Friday. We'll see you in two Catch weeks. You in two weeks. The topic, off the top of your head, what is it, Paul? What are we doing? I have no idea. I'll tweet it later in like 20 minutes. Okay. I'll look 20 at my minutes. Tag bingo. Topic. Oh, yeah. Right here. I have a dart. I don't have a dart, but pick your attack. Make it happen. Cool. Right. See y'all. See ya. Have a good one. Toodles. Adios.